We finally got a nice day today after a spate of bad weather and so we're gonna feed the cows some hay and then I got a lot of manure to spread and in between we're gonna take a look at some other stuff. This is all we've got left for hay. One of our own sad looking bales in the corner and then a couple of four by four rounds we bought from a neighbor. We're going to get some more hay today but it's small squares. Small squares, I thought we were done with them. We're down to buying square bales. There's no rounds to be had anymore and this wagon load's got a hundred on it and five bucks a bale for first cutting. And I consider myself lucky to be able to find it. So that's 500 bucks a load. 100 bales winds up being a week or a week and a half worth of hay for us. So we're paying at this point 45, 50 bucks a day to feed the cattle. I'd much rather be making my own hay. When hay season comes around this year, I'm stuffing that barn full of as much hay as I can buy as well as the hay that I make. It's like going through the Great Depression and stocking up in your pantry and never want to run out again. For anybody in farming, one of the real tests of driving skill is backing up a four-wheeled wagon. It's a whole different ball game than backing up a two-wheeled trailer. I heard tell of farmers in the old days that could actually back up two wagons hooked to each other with one tractor. I'd never try that. I'm going to back this wagon into the barn here and i got to get around this stone pile which doesn't make it any easier. The thing with small squares you want to handle them as little as possible. When we loaded this on at the neighbors he had an elevator and just dropped them in there it was really easy. I'm going to back the wagon in there and then I'll just unload them as I feed them to the cows. Oh and by the way those who ask about narrow front tractors and their benefits this is one of them. The tractor turns on dime. It's so much easier for backing in wagons than a wide front tractor. front tractors Woohoo! well there's one problem solved you know I went to the bookstore the other day and I found a book called how to solve 50% of your problems so I bought two and now I'm all set the winter before we quit making square bales I built two of these wagons on running gear that I had with old wagon frames on it and I built them out of pressure treated white oak was always the material of choice for rot resistance and strength on wagons but it was really expensive, so I built it out pressure treated. It's held up fine. Um, some things I did, I made these special latch plates where you just pull this pin and then the apron flips down. You can stand on the apron to unload it. I also put steel reinforcing. These are angles that go down and fix to the mainframe underneath to keep the sides from loosening up, which is always a problem with hay racks. Unloading a wagon from the side when it's been kicked full like this in a jumble of bales can be a pain too. So what I did is I made another apron on the side that flips down. You can stand on the apron and unload the bales. This door also flips open. On the other wagon I made this out of chains, but this one's got a door. That way when we're side unloading into the barn, I can flip this down, stand on it, and chuck bales off the side of the wagon. It makes it a lot easier to stand it on the ground. The cows want what's in the 
wagon, but they aren't getting any until they clean up the 4x4s that are over there. As well as working on the MD engine, I've been busy this past week. Whenever we get a nice day, I'm out here dealing with manure, and I got the two cattle pens cleaned out uh, late last week, and that's a big job. I'm glad it's done, and now it's time to continue spreading manure on the fields. I don't know. I don't think any book's going to teach me how to solve my problem. Time to spread the crap. She needs two glow plugs warm ups this morning. It's kind of cold. I always like to see those little wigglers in compost. That means it's getting broken down well. Worms are underappreciated. Uh-oh, I got a problem here. Looks like a pin sheared. Oh, it's a rivet. Jeez, it only lasted 70 years? My gosh, I thought the warranty was at least 100 years. Well, I gotta fix that. This is the pin that sheared off. Actually, it was a rivet that sheared off that holds the arm that drops the chain. There we go. You know, I have people that comment all the time, oh, this is a mechanical video, I'm not gonna watch it, or I wanna see a farm video. There are two sides of the same hand. I can't imagine having a farm without doing mechanical work, and I just don't get that. Take a 3 8 inch bolt with a washer on it and some red Loctite to keep it from spinning off. Aaron, we're back to the races. That squeaking you hear from the loader is because there's no grease fitting here where there should be. It looks like they repaired it and replaced the sleeve in here. Didn't put a new zerk in. I gotta take care of that sometime. Now it's time for fun with math. When we had our soil test done last year, the lab came back and recommended between 20 and 40 pounds per acre of N, P, and K, but mostly P, and that's nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So to put that much on per acre, you've got to do the math. If you buy 100 pounds of triple 17 fertilizer, you're getting 17 pounds of each per 100. So you've got to buy that much more fertilizer. Manure has always been considered a pretty weak fertilizer, and I went looking around on the web for value and it varies somewhat, but let's take cow manure. Cow manure straight per ton is about 747. So per ton, it's got seven pounds of nitrogen, four pounds of phosphorus, and seven pounds of potassium. Chicken manure is much more nutrient rich. It's 465336. Now our compost is not only cow manure, it's cow manure, hay, pig manure, chicken manure, and chicken offal or chicken guts and feathers from processing. So chances are it's a bit better, actually probably quite a bit better than that original 747 number that I gave you for straight cow manure. Okay, here's the staggering math when I ran the numbers. This spreader holds about 100 bushels. It's a 90 bushel spreader, but I heap it up pretty good. So if I figure round number 100 bushels per load, work it back at 75 pounds per bushel per, for manure, I've got 7,500 pounds in each spreader load. I put 25 loads on this five acre field that I'm standing in. So running through the math, 25 loads is 187,500 pounds or 94 tons of manure on this field. If I work through just that base 747 number for fertilizer value and work it down to per acre coverage, 
I'm putting on 131 pounds per acre of nitrogen, 75 pounds per acre of phosphorus, and six and 131 pounds per acre of potassium. That's like five times what the lab recommended in chemical fertilizer. Because remember, the lab recommended 20 to 40 pounds of each. And manure is so much better to use than chemical fertilizers. You put on a chemical fertilizer, your money goes out the door, and your fertilizer value is gone after 30 to 60 days, and you got to reapply mid-season. Manure is a gradual taper. It has the most impact when you put it on, and then it's a very gradual taper through the growing season, so you're continuously feeding the soil. It also has other benefits. It helps improve the structure of the soil. As worms and bugs work through the manure and turn it into the soil, you're loosening up the soil structure, improving water retention, having all kinds of good effects. And did I mention it's free? And I guess that the real kicker for me is that chemical fertilizer is like a drug. Once you start using it, you need more and more and more of it because the more you put on the soil, the more it's hurting the systems and the life in the soil that provide ongoing health in soil and nutrients that are accessible to the plants. The more fertilizer you put on, the more you're hurting that life, the more you're killing those systems, and it's a vicious cycle. You gotta put more and more on. All right, enough of me ranting. I gotta spread some poo. I got about 60 loads left to go. occurs to me in my manure nutrient analysis that I didn't account for the wetness of the manure. What did they include in that weight? Really wet manure? Dry manure? I don't know. Mine's kind of medium. Why are bacteria so bad at math? Because they multiply by dividing. Good stuff on the ground there. Well, that's it for manure today. I got to finish spreading this pile. And this is the pile from the barn that I cleaned out last week, so that'll stay another year. I've hauled out 37 loads of manure so far. I probably got another 40 or so in that. So I'm halfway there. Now I gotta go out and get another hay wagon so Hillary and I can pick up another load of hay tomorrow. I'm gonna use the H to go out and pick one up. Chickens are taking dust baths today. And the cows are sunbathing. The grass is starting to wake up out here. See these new shoots coming up from the clumps? I like to see that. At $40 a day and hey, I'm getting the cows out here just as soon as I can this spring. Oh yeah, that grass is waking up for sure. Clover growing. We're gonna go back by the road this time. wagon's been sitting in the field for about two years so I gotta blow up the tires and grease them before I take them down the road. Well it's afternoon chore time so we'll see how Doc and his mom and the other ladies are doing. Doc where are you? What are you doing up there?
Hey, buddy. You're busy eating today, huh? Yeah. You're wearing your dinner. How are you doing? Uh-oh, calf kiss. Oh! <laughs> My shirt don't taste very good. It tastes like manure. I've had it flying all over me today. You can see that Doc is starting to get ready for summer. See that fuzz on the outside of his coat? He's going to start shedding and get a summer coat pretty soon. He won't be so woolly. All right, Doc, I'll see you later. I got to go feed the piggies. What are you doing, pigs? Are you guys thirsty? You got a lot to say. What do you got to say? Listen to that guy. He goes, Arr. Thirsty pigs. Well, that's it for my day. Pigs are watered, cows are fed, everybody's happy. Nor pile's a little bit smaller. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.